This is part 125 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss EO month function in SQL Server. EO stands for end of. So this is end of month function. It's introduced in SQL Server 2012. It returns the last day of the month of the specified date. Here is the syntax. The first parameter for this function is the start date. So that is the date for which to return the last day of the month. The second parameter is month to add. This is optional. This parameter specifies the number of months to add to the start date. So if we specify a value for the second optional parameter, then end of month is going to add those number of months to the start date and then it is going to return the last day from the resulting date. Let's look at an example now. So notice here we are passing this date to end of month function and if you look at the month here it is November and November month has got 30 days. So the last day of November 20th 2015 should be 30th of November 2015. I have the same query already typed here so when we execute this we should get 30th of November um, as the last day. Now let's look at an example of retrieving the last day from the February month from a non-leap year. 2015 is a non-leap year and we want the last day of February month. So I'm going to specify the month number as 2. In a non-leap year, February has 28 days. So when we execute this query, we should get 20th of February as the last day. Notice that we get 28th of February as the last day. Now let's look at doing the same thing from a leap year. 2016 is a leap year. Now how do we know a specific year is a leap year? If that year is divisible by 4, then we know it's a leap year. So 2016 is divisible by 4. So we get 504. So that's a leap year. Within a leap year, February has got 29 days. So when we execute the same query, we should get 29th of February as the last day. Notice 29th of February. Now let's look at an example of using the second optional parameter month to add. When we specify a value for this parameter, it's going to add those many number of months to the start date and from the resulting date, the end of month is going to return us the last date. So at the moment, the day that we have is uh, February 20 at 2016. Now what I'm going to do is add two months to it. So when we add two months to February, we will get April, March and April. Okay, so we want to find the last day of April 2016. So let's execute this. In April, we've got 30 days. Look at that. April 30th is the last day. Now let's look at an example of subtracting a month um, you know, from the start date. To subtract a month, all you have to do is use a negative number. Let's say I want to subtract one month and then compute the end of that resulting date. So in this case it's going to subtract one month. So when we subtract one from February we are going to get you know January 2016. In the month of January we have got 31 days so January 31st 2016 should be the last day. We have all those examples right here. Now let's look at an example of using this end of month function with table data. We'll use this employees table for this example. Notice that we've got three columns in this table, ID, name, and date of birth. What we want to do is return the last day of the month from the date of birth of every employee. So if you look at Mark, he's born on you know, um, January 11th, 1980. John is born on 12th of December 1981. So from their date of birth, we want the last day of the month. So for January, it is 31st of January. For December, it is 31st of December. For November, it is 30th of November. So from the date of birth of every employee, we want the last day of that month. Okay, so let's look at an example of using that um, end of month function with table data. So I'm going to use end of month and we want to use it on date of birth column. And what I'm going to do is retrieve the date of birth column as well. And let's give this column, the last column in alias, let's call this last day. So when we execute this, we should get the last day 
from the date of birth of every employee. Okay, so at the moment we are getting the complete date. Now instead of complete date, if you want just the last day, as you can see here, from the month of their date of birth, then use date part function. So all you need to do here is so this end of month is actually going to return a date. So from that date, I want a part of it. So I'm going to use date part function. All I want is the date part. Okay, I don't want uh, month and year. So we want date part. When we execute this, we should get only the last day of the month, not the complete date, as you can see it here. Thank you for listening and have a great day.